DeWan, have you made a decision about whether you're going to be back here next year? Uh, not yet. I'm just still weighing all the options, honestly. What are kind of maybe some of the things you're thinking about in terms of making that decision? I would just say just where so where did I finish up at and uh, just looking at film and just seeing like what, what could I correct and seeing if like if it is good enough to go to the NFL or if I need to come back and more so in that aspect. How, what ways do you feel like uh, you've you know gotten better over the course of a year? Maybe what are some of the things you look at that you can still do better? I feel like uh, I got better at run blocking and then just just saying I would say like stand vertical, but um, I would say I still need to work on that, and that's kind of like part of the aspect of like just the fifty fifty part of it. And so that's what I would just say I need to come back and work on where I improved in this this season. Are you playing in the Rose Bowl regardless, though? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I see it on TV and I for sure can't miss this opportunity. What does it mean to you to, you know, finish this season with a win and to, you know, bounce back from that loss to Michigan? It means a lot just knowing just like basically like the whole nation is counting on us for uh, Buckeye fans just count us to go out with the dub, honestly. What do you think about the Michigan game and how you all performed in the music? I mean, it's out there and of course like we watch we watched this film the other day and I mean Tim North is a great team and we were too, but they were just better that day for sure. Do you feel like you specifically learned anything going up against their defense guys? Uh for sure. It taught me a lot. It just it said just gotta be prepared more, I feel like. And so I I was in a horrible like place just knowing that it's loud and I just feel like I didn't react to it well. How much did it affect you guys that CJ lost your voice and putting here in your end of the line, obviously, and is that a factor? Uh, at that point, I just started looking at the ball because I, I just couldn't hear him. So I'm just getting off on the ball and just looking at it. I mean, you can see me on film. I'm just, just really just looking to the ball because I, at that point, it was no point even listening to his count. Are you one of the guys who was sick for the game? Me? Oh, yeah. uh, no. I know you did have to come out of that game early. Were you injured and are you good now? Um, I mean, I got banged up, but I, I should be straight for the rest of the DeWan, I mean, when you hear people question the, you know, toughness and physicality of his team, does that uh, give extra motivation to want to make a statement about that against Utah? Uh, for sure, just because that, that's what this program is built on, and for uh, people to question it and just question how tough we are and knowing that's like our motto every day and what we live by. I mean, we, we for sure have been coming a little bit harder during practice, I feel like. Hey, DeWan, uh, obviously this program is, you know, you can bring in like five and four star, you know, offensive linemen and things like that. But it's also known for being able to develop guys, when, no matter if, where they're ranked and things like that. I'm curious about how that's affected you, how you've seen that in your own personal development, kind of that growth process that you've seen, whether it's with there, whether it's with yourself, like these guys that are kind of built up. It's kind of cool. I and mean, I just refer back to uh, what Joe and B says all the time, trust the process. And uh, I feel like I've been doing that my whole life, whether it's been high school or, um, colleges and I think just people just like me in there and other so long the line it, it's worked out for them as long as you just trust the process what I mean and, and this may be an overly simple question but what is the difference of playing high school offensive line between college offensive? I would I would just say these are just grown men like they have something else to go prove just coming as a freshman you know you just you just working on what you need to work on, uh, work on school. It's a it's a lot going on, but the guys that you're going against is just like they're already established. Like they, some of these dudes got families. It's like who you going against? Like but we are working for a paycheck, and I, I feel like that's like the total difference between high school uh, and college. And obviously, you guys just brought in a couple of guys from the 2022 class that may not be the highest ranked guys on the line and things like that. What advice do you have in terms of you know their development and them coming into what you've known for the past however many years you've been here? I would just say, uh, since my three years here, it's, it's going to be long, it's going to be tough, but you just always got to stay through it and just grind it out. Just like It's going to be tough winters, it's going to be tough summers. Yeah. So you're going to be thinking about just not even waking up and just coming back some days, but I feel like no matter what, you got God and you got yourself and you just got your family, like, they take care of the rest. DeWand, uh, what are maybe uh, some of the guys that you've seen over the course of this year that aren't playing yet on the offensive line, but that you've seen really grow in practice? Uh, I would say Zen, uh, Donovan. Those are two guys I probably watch the most just because, like, I'm a tackle, tackle guy. But, I mean, they're just really versatile, I would say. To, 
uh, Zen, he's just been getting better with his pass blocking, I would say. And Donovan, he just kind of reminds me of Jamarco. He can do it all, like, really. He can play guard, tackle. I mean, he's really probably, like, the most versatile. Between him and Knock and Josh Fryer, they're probably the most versatile people on the line. Ron, I just want to make sure I understood what you were saying about the Michigan game. Did you feel... You said you feel like you needed to prepare more, prepare better, something like that. Is that a, are you talking mentally? Yeah. I would say mentally and physically. I feel like we uh, kind of overlooked them, in my opinion. But um, I, I would just say we looked overlooked just a couple of players. To me, that's just just me and my opinion. But besides that, I feel like the coaches prepared us enough to the point we should have went out and executed. Do you guys, I mean, you guys, the second last game of the year against Michigan State, it just seemed like you guys were firing on all cylinders, everything was great, and then obviously weren't able to do that against Michigan. Like, was there something different about that Michigan week that maybe you guys weren't able to quite deliver at the same level as week before? Uh, I, wouldn't, I, I didn't feel it. Like, I, I feel like we were out there and practice, and we, we all we all went out there and did what we were supposed to do. I just feel like we just, just didn't come out with the win, in my opinion. You said you're, you're doing a self-evaluation right now as far as it relates to next year. How does the Michigan game play into that, the experience you individually had in that game? Does it give you any more pause that uh, whether or not you might be ready for that next level? I mean, it, it does, just knowing that I went against, like, NFL talent. Just just saying, like, I mean, I I had a bad game, but also at the same time, I looked at some of the clips, like, it wasn't that bad. But I know for sure, like, that plays into a role and just going to next year. But... I don't even try to just pay attention to that. I just try to just break it down and just sit with Coach Day and just listen to what he's telling me. Well, and yeah, you just touched on it. I mean, you can have a really good game going and have three or four bad plays and it erases things, right? I mean, how tough is that to deal with, I guess, from a consistency standpoint, but just the, the, the intensity that you have to have literally every day? That's what I'm saying, though. You have to just be mentally locked in. I feel like that was just on my part. And I, I feel like that's what plays into the fact of just coming back, just knowing that is he disciplined. And I mean, I feel like I am disciplined. And just knowing that that was like my first year starting, but I can't put that into play because I know that I was ready for the situation. And I just feel like I, I put it on myself that I execute. And in my opinion, I put, I put the game on me. Like, I just flat out say it all, all the time. People, people try to tell me, but nah, I, I put the game on me for sure. Well, I'm sorry if you had asked this already, but have you made a decision as far as next year? No, oh, no, nothing yet. Can I ask you this question? Have you ever played Santa Claus? Would you be a good Santa Claus if you played Santa Claus? I mean, you're that big guy. You seem pretty jolly. <laughs> if I played Santa Claus, uh, I don't know. I would have to be in the mood for it. I don't know. I'll be iffy on Christmas. It's just hit or miss for me. It is? Why is that? Why yeah. Is that? Why is that? I don't know. I just, I just want to be a Christmas guy. I'm more of a summer person. I don't even be caring about it. It's too cold. <laughs> yeah. I read about bundling up with anything. But uh, so, do you remember a great any kind of great gift you got for Christmas that stands out, or any kind of great moment you had during that time, or did it kind of tainted you on it? Or <laughs> I got a four wheeler one time for uh, like a mini four wheeler for Christmas. That's right. Yes, honestly. What did you look like on a mini four? <laughs> <laughs> I was probably like seven, so I probably could fit oh. at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Juan, you, you just touched on a minute ago. I just, you know, offensive line, like I said a while ago, you can have these great plays and then just have one that just everybody sees, right? I mean, and like you're taking it on your shoulders, etc. But uh, how hard is it to, like, quarterback mentality? You know, forget about that last play, move on to the next one. But, that last play might be the play of the game, right? I mean. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like I, I mean, that's every down, honestly. I yeah. put it in more so I expect. Uh, I just I forget it. So, say if my hands get swiped, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I just have to line up again and do it again. But I just go back to my training and just say, like, what did I do wrong on this play in my head at the same time while I'm going to the next play? What did I do wrong? And how can I fix it on the, on the go? I mean, it's like kind of coaching yourself in your head while you're playing. Yeah. You know, it seemed like teams a lot this year that were effective, fairly effective against you guys. Just line guys up way out wide, just had to make a take a running charge either around or try to. Did did you see that more and more as the season went on? I would say so. I saw a lot of these teams play wide nines, and uh, I know why they do it so they can get guys to pop out. And I mean, of course, it works sometimes. I mean, it worked against me as y'all seen, but. That's when we get go back to the study board and get better and just see like where, where do we go wrong at and like 
I mean, I can <laughs> go to, I, I can see it all in my head, the sack I gave, I, I oversetting, and I was just trying to run down line, just like we normally do. I mean, I feel like I just, just gave him too much room. I just tried to take his space away, but it just didn't work out how I landed. Yeah, sometimes it has to be technique on the fly, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean literally. I feel, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. How much farther, if you, I mean, but when you look back, I mean, how far you've come this year as a regular player and stuff, is it, is it kind of amazing to you that you have all this catalog in your head that you didn't have in your head? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just had to put myself on a different pedestal just from everybody else, just knowing that, like, everybody's counting on you and everybody's looking up to you or like basically everybody's depending on you so it's up to you to just to go do it i feel like that's how i how to play it this season one we've asked a lot of questions over the whole season about cj stroud and for you to protect for him in his first year as a starter is there one thing about cj's work ethic that really impressed you in the course of the season for him to play the way you did uh, he's always in the film room, I say, like, for more so, like, me, uh, I have to see stuff on the field, like, so that's how I get it, like, because, of course, you play basketball, so, like, you got to go through plays and run plays, and so, like, the more repetition I get it, um, that's just how the way I get it, but I also, I'm, I'm I'd be in the film room, but not as, not quite as I would say as him, but I would say I just love his work ethic, and just seeing him here, just knowing, like, he knows the blitz before I, I even do, but I mean, I know the blitz before he do. And so like, we'll argue about who would call this and what's that. So like, it goes hand to hand. I, I love it. I asked Travion the same question about what he liked about CJ's work ethic, but his honest answer was he does his Dougie in the huddle. I'm curious if you can provide an insight if you've seen CJ and his personality on the field. Uh, <laughs> if you see sometimes with me and Fit, me, me and him on film, like we'll celebrate and that's like us on our personality like, between me and him. I mean, that's like, that's what I would say probably, like between me and him, that's like our personality. Another guy I want to ask you about is Jackson Smith and Jake, but for him to emerge the way he did, when you're down there blocking in the trenches and he goes down and makes a deep ball catch uh, down the field, what, what do you make of Jackson and the way he's really emerged this year uh, in the wide receiver? I mean, I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming sometime soon. And um, Jackson, like one of my best friends so, on the team. So seeing him do that is, is I'm most definitely happy for him. Like, I'm I'm six eight and so like I'll be I'll be low and you know, I see I just see a little <laughs> these little, little numbers come out of nowhere and just see him in the end zone and I'm just so happy for him honestly. What's he like? I mean, what, what, how would you describe him to somebody who's never met him? Uh, he's, I would just say he's funny. He's funny, goofy, and then he's just he's just a real dude. He's always there for me no matter what. I would just say so. Can you tell he's from Texas? Does anything about him stand out that he's from Texas? Nah, you would think he was from like Cali or something. Like the way he is, he's a he gets on there. He's a pretty boy, but but he, he's he's probably tough as he can get. I would say. Yeah. Dwan, when when you look at these Last guys on video. You know, you, I think you've heard the scuttlebutt, not scuttlebutt, the wording that you guys got out physical at Michigan, you know, and uh, uh, their offense coordinator made comments about the Ohio State defense and stuff like that. But do y'all feel like you have a point to prove and this is the kind of team, the kind of challenge you want? I mean, you know, they're, they're a physical team, they're 12th in the nation, total defense, et cetera, you know. Uh, what, what's this going to be all about, I guess? Right, Utah's a great team for sure, but it's, it's going to be a great, great game between us, I would say so.